Welcome to video number one in this new class, Microsoft 365 Excel, The Complete Story. And in this video, we'll see the conventions we're going to use in this class and get an introduction to Excel. Now the very first thing you're going to do with every video is to download the Excel file and the PDF file. Now this is the Highline College website, but over at YouTube, these links are available below the video. We're going to right click the Excel file, save link as, on your computer, you're going to select some drive, whether it's a hard drive or an external drive. I'm going to select the desktop. Then with the drive selected on the left, we're going to use the keyboard Control-Shift-N to create a new folder. You can name it something smart, like Microsoft 365, Excel, and the class at Highline is Business 218. When I hit Enter, that names the folder. Hit Enter again. Now I'm inside that folder. I'm going to keep the extension .xlsx. Click Save. For the PDF, right click, save link as, that's the correct location, file name extension is fine, click save. Let's use the keyboard Window E. That opens up Windows Explorer because I want to verify that that actually downloaded. On the left, I'm going to select my folder and I'm looking inside. Sure enough, both files are there. Now, if you don't see the dot extension, like dot xlsx or dot pdf, go in Windows Explorer to view over to file name extensions and check this. If we uncheck this, we do not see the extensions. Without those extensions, it makes file management more difficult. So we're going to check file name extensions. Now let's use Windows Explorer to open our Excel file. I can double click the file to open. Now here are the topics for our video. We're going to start off by going to the sheet conventions. Now we haven't even formally talked about what these tabs are and how Excel is set up, but let's click on this what's called a worksheet tab, conventions, and this shows you the color coding I'm going to use for Excel workbooks. Now this is a table. These are called column headers or field names. These column headers or field names will usually be in dark blue with white font. The actual bits of data, the employee name and the amount of sales they had, since that's raw data that we type in, that's not going to have any fill. We'll learn how to create formulas, and the formulas will always be in cells that are green. This is a number that the formula uses called a formula input. When we type the number and then the label at the top, we'll either have red with white, or sometimes we'll do it this way. Now if we scroll down using our scroll bar over here, here's another color coding. We will use Excel table objects. That's where the column headers or field names are at the top. The data is in each row. And in this case, it'll have that blue with white font and alternating colors for each row. And for the sheet tabs down at the bottom, yellow means information, blue means the sheet that you're going to work on, type things, create formulas, create pivot tables, and the red sheets have the exact finished example that I created when I finished the video. For example, the convention sheet is yellow because this is just information, and in fact, this sheet is in the PDF notes when you download it. So if you like to read a piece of paper, you can do that. Here's a blue sheet. So when I click on it, we'll actually create a formula right there. But if you click on the red one right next to it, AN means answer. It has the same thing, but it has the finished formula. Also, we have some practice or homework problems, and we don't get those till video number three. The black will be an empty sheet where everything after it is a blue sheet where you do the homework and a red sheet that has the answer. Now back in our workbook for video number one, let's go to the worksheet by clicking on the Sheet Tab Structure. Now fundamentally, Excel represents a two-way grids. We have columns and we have rows. 
The columns are represented by letters, A, B, C, D, and the rows by numbers. Here's the D column. Here's row 20. And at the intersection of a column and row, that's called a cell. Now, the name of that cell is D20. You can also look up in the name box. Whatever cell you have selected, I'll select B2, it'll tell you that cell. Now, next to the name box is the formula bar, and that'll show you the content of the cell. So column, row, make up a cell. All the cells make up a worksheet. Now, we can call this a worksheet or just sheet for short. Each one of these tabs down at the bottom, these are called sheet tabs. And all you have to do is click to jump to a new sheet. If you want to rename, you simply double click, type a new name, and I'm not going to hit Enter because I want to keep its structure. But when you hit Enter, that names the sheet. Now I'm going to click Escape. You can also right click, go up to Tab Color, and color your sheets. Now I'm going to click Escape. You can also add a new sheet with this plus button. When I click the plus, it gives you a new sheet with a terrible name. Do not leave default names. Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3 are not informative. Always give the worksheets a good name that communicates the content of that sheet. Now I'm going to right click, not the cell, but the actual thing I want to do something to the sheet. So right click and delete. Back on structure. Now when you select a sheet, this is called the active sheet. I go over to conventions. This is the active sheet. Back to structure. So we have column, row, cell. All the cells make up a worksheet. And all of these worksheets make up the workbook. Now don't call your workbook a document. The word document, that's for a Word file. This is a workbook. And don't confuse worksheet, that's just one sheet with lots of cells, with workbook. The workbook or the file, that contains all the worksheets. Now later we'll see that there's some other things like a query using Power Query or a data model using Power Pivot. Those are other types of objects behind the scenes. Now we have a workbook file, and up in the title bar we can see the name of this workbook file. Now down here are tabs for the ribbon. I have them collapsed. Right click one of the tabs and uncollapse. You can also use the keyboard, Control F1. That is a toggle to show and hide the tabs in the ribbon. Now this is the Home tab. And in the Home tab, there are groups, clipboard, font, alignment, and the ever so important number formatting. And then in each group are commands that you can click. There's the Insert tab in the ribbon, Insert Charts, Insert Pivot Table, over in Data, Get and Transform Data, and the Queries and Connections group. That's the amazing Power Query tool that we'll see later. Back to Home. Now above the Ribbon tab are some Save buttons that we're never going to use. We'll use keyboards. Control S to save and F12 to save as. But to the right of those save buttons, I want to click the drop down, and there's something called the Quick Access Toolbar or QUAT. That's a toolbar that we're allowed to build. So I want to come down and say Show Below the Ribbon. And the way you build this QUAT is you go to the items that you use all the time and right click Add to Quick Access Toolbar. Right click, Add to Quick Access Toolbar. Right click, Add. Right click, Add. And we can see our Quick Access Toolbar starting to emerge. But here's the really cool thing. You can go to any one of the tabs, right click, Add. And even come to a drop down here. This is Power Query, Get Data, Launch Power Query Editor, and right click, Add to Quick Access Toolbar. Now, the real advantage to this is if you're working in the Data tab all the time, you have to come all the way back to Home and then go to get your Fill. But notice this Fill button here. It doesn't matter where I am or which tab I'm working in. These commands are always visible. Now, we're going to learn a lot of keyboards in this class, 
So we're not going to add things we use all the time, like a pivot table, because there's a convenient keyboard for that. Now you can improve your QWAT even further by right click, Customize Quick Access Toolbar. Under Choose Commands From, you select All Commands. And there's about 1,500 commands. You can go through this entire list, including some items that are not in the Ribbon tab. Select whatever you want, Add. You can reorder. I'm going to put Increase Decimal first, Decrease Decimal second. Once you build your QWAT, then you click OK. And if you like the visual here, you can leave it below. But I like to right click, show above the ribbon. Now another thing that's important and convenient about the QWAT is each of us uses different commands. So you get to go through, add all the commands that you use all the time. Now I'm going to hit Pause. And so that's exactly what I did. I added just the buttons that I like. Now let's talk about navigating through the sheets. You can click to activate a sheet. There's also sheet arrows. And watch what happens to the active sheet when I click right. It pushes one sheet under, shows a new sheet over here, but the active sheet remains active. Click, click, and then go back the other direction. There's also, if you hover, a reminder there. Control, left click, will go to the last sheet. So I'm holding Control, click. Sure enough, I can see the last sheet. Notice the active sheet is still active because I'm using the scroll arrows. Click, and I can see all the sheets at the beginning. Click, click. Also, over on the right, these three ellipses, when you click that, it'll select the next possible sheet. Bam, there it is. Click, it got that sheet. The best way to navigate through sheets when you have a lot of sheets is to right click the scroll arrows. And there's the Activate Sheet dialog box. You can click on Conventions, click OK. And Conventions is now the active sheet. There's also a keyboard. Notice I'm on Conventions. Control Page Down moves the active sheet to the right. Control Page Up moves to the left. Now we want to go to our next sheet, Keyboard. So I'm going to use Control Page Down twice. Now here's a picture of my keyboard for my desktop. And here's a picture of my laptop. If I want to be efficient and work as quickly as I can, I'm using this type of keyboard, not a laptop keyboard. Now we're going to use these function keys at the top. They do some amazing things in Excel. There's the Window key. There's actually a Right Click key. These are the Navigation keys, Page Up, Page Down arrow keys, and the Number Pad for entering Numbers, and there's a quick Enter right there, and also math symbols. Now on a laptop, you have all sorts of different sets of keys. But you can see we don't have a number pad. Navigation keys are down here. There is a page up and page down. But the biggest problem is the F keys. You have to use an FN or FX key to access these. That means you have to press this key with the F key. Actually, sometimes when I go on the road, I bring my laptop and I bring a plug-in keyboard like this. Now, keyboard shortcuts. There's a list of keyboard shortcuts we're going to use. Now, you don't need to memorize all these now because we'll use them throughout the class. And when we bump into them, we'll talk about them. These are also in the PDF notes. But I want to give you an illustration of why keyboards are so important. We have a data set of revenue, and our goal is to add some number formatting to show the currency and then add. Now the first thing is, we don't know how tall this is. So we're going to scroll down and try and find the bottom. Oh, no, no, we do not want to do that. We want a keyboard to jump to the bottom. Now I just scroll down, and I want to jump back to the active cell. That means the last cell I selected. So I use Control Backspace. That's a great keyboard to get you out of trouble when you're way deep down at the bottom of a spreadsheet, either a selected cell or in a formula. Now let's click in the top cell and the keyboard to jump down to the last cell with data is Control Down Arrow. And just like that, we can see the last bit of data is in row 235. Now that keyboard knew to stop because the next cell was empty. 
That means if you have an empty cell in your data set, it's not going to get to the bottom. It's just going to get to the cell directly above the empty cell. Control up arrow. Now our goal is to select the entire column and then add number formatting. Before we do that, let's think about selecting a cell. That's B32. And before you click on E32, what happens if we hold Shift and then click? Select, hold Shift, click. That highlights everything between the two bookends or between the two clicks. So in the top cell here, Control down arrow would get us to the bottom. But if we hold Shift, that will jump to the bottom and select everything in between. So Control Shift, down arrow. Now we could go up to the Home Ribbon tab, Number Group, and add Currency Number Formatting. But all the options for number formatting are not in the Home tab. They're in the Format Cells dialog box. And the keyboard to open up the Format Cells dialog box is Control-1. Now we'll see this a lot throughout the class. Format Cells, we can add number formatting. All sorts of alignment that's not in the ribbon, font border, fill, even protection. Back on number, I'm going to select currency. Two decimals is fine. I'm going to use the dollar sign. And with currency number formatting, you're allowed to select how a negative number is displayed. That's all good. Let's click OK. And just like that, we've quickly, using Control shift down arrow, formatted all of our numbers. Now let's come over here, and we want to add. And we want to use the sum function. Now most people select the cell, go up to Home, over to Editing, and use the Sigma or Auto Sum button. Now hover, and notice what it says. Alt equals, hover over some other commands in any ribbon. And if it has a keyboard, Microsoft will usually show you what it is. So bold is Control-B. And although there are about 450 worksheet functions in Excel, sum function is the only one with a keyboard. So look at that, Alt equals. So let's try it. Alt equals, and there it is. That's our first formula. It put in an equal sign, which always has to be the first character in the cell to create a formula. We're using a built-in function called sum. The open and close parentheses has the range B36 to C36. Now, that's not the correct range. But notice the selected range has dancing ants. As long as those dancing ants are dancing around, you're in full edit mode. Watch, I can click anywhere until I get exactly the correct range. So let's click in the top cell. And I definitely don't want to click and drag with my selection cursor. I'm going to use Control shift down arrow so that's the second use for that. You can use it to select and format, or you can use it to select cells when you're creating a formula. Now let's use Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell, and then Enter. And there you go. Keyboards are fast. That's why we use them. Now let's go over to the sheet Cursors. This is a list of cursors. As we encounter them in the class, we'll talk about them. This is also in the PDF notes. Now let's go over to Data and Alignment. Now the types of data that we can have in the Excel worksheet, well, we can have text, numbers, logical or Boolean values. That's when we have true or false. We can get errors. And empty cells really isn't a data type, but it's something that we have to deal with. Now let's type the word Excel. And when I hit Enter, I want you to notice what the default alignment is. Enter. It's left. That's your visual cue that this is text. If I type a number, 43, and Enter, well, the alignment is right. That's your visual cue that Excel thinks this is a number. If I type lowercase true, in this case, I'm going to hit the Tab key to move to the right. It capitalizes and centers. The other Boolean value is false. And notice I spelled it wrong, so of course, that visual cue tells me that's not a Boolean value, that's text. I'll try it again, false. There you go. If we create a formula, and all formulas start with an equal sign, with my selection cursor, I'm going to click on cell D4. So that means it'll take 43, 
divide, that's forward slash, and I'm going to type a 0 in. Well, are we allowed to divide numbers by 0? When I hit the Tab key to move to the right, sure enough, in Excel, it gives me a divide by 0 error. If I create a formula, equal sign, and I try to add a number plus a word, well, you're just not allowed to do that in math. When I hit Enter, it's polite. It gives me a value error. That means one of the inputs into the formula, along with that math operation, are not correct. So these are the different data types that we'll see in the worksheet. Later, when we use Power Query, we'll see that there are some other data types. Also in Excel, we could have text, a number, a Boolean, and an error all in the same column. Later in Power Query, it'll only let us put a particular data type in the column. And that's very helpful when we're using pivot tables and other data analysis tools. Now, why is this default alignment important? Well, let's look down here. We have some sales here and here. Immediately, you should recognize the default alignment says, these are numbers, these are text. If we come over and try to add Alt equals, it got the correct range, C14 to C18. So when I hit Enter, these are numbers, so the sum function adds. Over here, Alt equals. Well, wait a second. We immediately know there's trouble because it didn't grab the numbers above. Well, we can redirect using the selection cursor. So I get the right range and Enter. Well, that's 0. The sum function is programmed to ignore text. Excel sees these as numbers, these as text. But really, the immediate visual cue is that these numbers are not aligned to the right. Now, that's where Power Query will come in later, because this is common, where we get numbers from the company database, and they come to us as text. In Power Query, it's easy to just convert these to numbers. Now, another great use for default alignment is to track down typing errors. Now, for numbers, we saw that we can type a number. But dates and times are also numbers. If I type 43 and accidentally type an extra decimal tab, the visual cue immediately tells me that's not a number, it's text. If I enter the date 12 slash 24 slash 2022, when I hit tab, there are definitely not 244 days in December, so Excel does not recognize this as a proper date, which should be aligned to the right. With time, you enter hour, colon, minutes, and you're supposed to put space AM or PM. But if you leave out that space tab, there's the text. That's not a proper time value. In all cases, if I fix my mistake, it'll immediately be aligned to the right, and I'll know it's a number. I can select the cell, put the cell in edit mode with F2. And if I click backspace to remove one of those periods, now when I hit Tab, I can see the alignment to the right. I know it's a number. F2, I'll do the same thing here. Remove one of the fours, Tab. And now I have a proper date aligned to the right, so I know it's a number. For this 8 AM, all I have to do is add a space. Tab, and now I have a proper time aligned to the right. Now let's look at one last thing. Scroll down. Here's an inventory tracker. And we're going to highlight this and do something that many people in the working world mistakenly do. Home, over to alignment, and they want everything to be neat and tidy. So they use center alignment. But as soon as you do that, you lose your visual cue. Right here, here's a formula F2. Well, it looks like it's working. These balances over here look like they're correct. But let me undo that alignment using the keyboard for undo, Control Z. We lost that visual cue and this one. The totals are wrong, and so is that. So don't use alignment. Always keep the default alignment. Now, the exception is if you have a finished report, you're done with everything, and it's something that someone's going to view, then you can use alignment. But this is a working model where we're entering numbers and we have formulas. 
keep that default alignment. I can't tell you how many consulting jobs I've done where they send me the spreadsheet and everything's centered, and it makes it much harder to track down errors. All right, so default alignment, sometimes it's our best friend. Now let's go over to the sheet, what Excel does. Now what can Excel do? Well, it can do almost anything. The possibilities are almost limitless. But in general, it can do three things. It can hold data, make calculations, and perform data analysis. Now when it comes to holding data, this is a table with field names at the top and records in rows. Each row tells us a particular date, sales rep, and the amount of their sales. But this is just data we're going to use to make calculations and perform data analysis. We're not storing it here permanently. You use databases for that. Now in Excel, we can hold data in the worksheet. We can also hold data in a pivot table cache and a data model, which we'll see later. We can also make calculations from that data. If I hit F2, you can see we're using the average function to calculate average sales. And data analysis, that's just taking raw data, converting it into useful information to gain insight and make decisions. Here we just took sales and date. We had to roll it up into monthly sales. This is a report. And from that report, we created a visualization. So we can gain insight. June was the biggest month. And here we can see the trend. From January to June, the trend is up. And between May and June, it looks like it's way up. Now that's our perfect transition to next video. Next video on this calc sheet, we'll make these calculations using Excel worksheet formulas. And then on the data analysis sheet, we'll take this data set. And with a pivot table, we'll create these two reports and this visualization. Now in this video, we talked about what Excel can do. Very importantly, we talked about data and alignment, cursors. We talked about the importance of keyboards and keyboard shortcuts. We talked all about the structure of Excel. And we started it off by talking about the conventions for this class. All right, next video, we'll make calculations and perform data analysis. See you next video.